we recognize Jesus as the living water, and we recognize Jesus was sent to redeem mankind, we start to understand there's a difference between salvation and new birth. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. These scriptures made me start to realize that what Jesus did at the cross and what all humanity experienced that believes in Him is salvation. Even in the Old Testament, it says, all who will call upon the Lord, He will save. So salvation is a gift to all mankind. But this new birth, this born again experience that Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus in John 3, carries a whole different relationship with our Father and requires a different mentality. And all of us who have experienced to a higher degree the love of God, the power of His resurrection, recognize there's more to salvation than what we have been taught in our early Christian life. We all know that God sent His Son to redeem man. But the new birth is something that He explained to Nicodemus. And He didn't call it salvation. He said, unless a man is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I think that is a critical beginning. And one of the illustrations you can find in the Scriptures that show this very clearly is when Jesus was dying on the cross. One of the thieves cried out to Jesus and said, I know you're the Son of God. And Jesus told him, this day you will be with me in paradise. Now that man received salvation in his soul, but he did not receive the new birth. When we look at creation in Genesis, we see the magnificent design of God for physical creation. Over this empty, voidless rock, the Spirit was hovering over waters. So even though there was nothing here, there was still water. And the Spirit was hovering over the water. So when God spoke, light is, He released His glory through the Spirit into the water so that the Godhead worked in unison to create what they all believed and imagined at the same time. This magnificent planet in the universe and His glory filled the earth. Now I want you to think about baptism and Jesus' baptism. As Jesus is being immersed into the physical water as our high priest, as the real Holy of Holies John is standing in. He comes up and what happens? The Spirit in the form of a dove comes and hovers over Jesus. The same way creation began in Genesis. So here is the significance I want you to see. Jesus entered into the waters of baptism as God's Son. He came up in, as the Christ in heaven. He fulfilled His assignment because right there He signed the contract with all of heaven 
that he would fulfill his death on the cross, that he would become the lamb, the lamb slain for all mankind for redemption. And the picture of the dove and the water, which Jesus is, he's both the living water and the spirit, are connected again like they were in the beginning before God spoke light is. Look at this picture and now start to recognize that if you come to Jesus as the Christ, you need to enter into His waters of baptism, into His consciousness of the Christ, and receive the revelation of the water and the Spirit of what He told Nicodemus. He says, unless you are born of the water and the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God. This is so powerful. I think most of us have just read over this and not put the dots together. Creation in the beginning set everything in motion for this day at the Jordan when there would be a new creation, a new covenant that God was making with mankind. That the first Adam sinned. So God needed to redeem man. He did that with Jesus. And now Jesus has become the womb for us to be birthed into the kingdom of God. He is the spiritual womb for all of us to receive the new birth. So when Jesus is telling Nicodemus, unless you're born of the water and the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom, he's making a very strong statement. He's telling Nicodemus there's a spiritual realm that you're so aware of because you see the miracles that I'm doing. So you know that there's something outside the natural that's causing something to change in the physical. This immersion into Christ allows every person that understands that to see the kingdom of God, to recognize what is actually happening and what their responsibility is. So as I'm standing here today in front of this ocean and you see the vastness and the power and the perpetualness, how it continues day after day, that's the desire of God the Father inside of us, that we will ever ascend into the revelation of what Christ has finished, what He has done. Salvation is for all men who believe Jesus died on that cross was the Son of God and resurrected. The new birth begins at resurrection when Jesus is no longer Jesus of Nazareth, but now He is the living Christ. And that is the new birth that we can experience if we're ready to recognize that our souls who understood salvation in the mind have to be totally set aside and our spirit now has to be awakened and alive to the Spirit of God because that's where the new birth is. That's where His resurrection was and that's where our resurrection in Christ begins. So as you read this book again, Immersed in Him, and as you study what is being spoken, I want you to challenge your beliefs. I want you to really take a hard look at what it is you believe and why you believe it. Immersion into Christ is the key to seeing the kingdom of God. He told Nicodemus, unless you are born of the water and the Spirit. Who is the water and the Spirit? It's Jesus. Unless you are immersed in the water and the Spirit, you can't see the kingdom because He is the kingdom. And without 
that immersion, without that revelation, you can't enter into that kingdom. So this is a message that challenges you, that encourages you all at the same time. And I want you to receive it because it will change your life.